everyone, Alexandra Cote here again. Today we are looking over ConvertFlow. So ConvertFlow is a tool you can use to create landing pages, pop-up banners, and lots of other elements you can use for your marketing and sales channels. So before starting, I did ask around to make sure that ConvertFlow wouldn't affect the speed of your website, given the most recent Core Web Vitals changes from Google. I do recommend going over this piece, which I'm going to link below, which shows you the best practices of ensuring that no pop-up and really no other element will slow down your website, including using optimized images, using only one or two fonts to prevent the font bloat on your website, and really lots of other tips. But as an idea, you should be safe to go. And I'm actually going to show you some alternatives to pop-ups that will never, ever slow down your website, and they require minimal maintenance. For this tutorial, I am using the free version of ConvertFlow, which honestly is a really good offer if you have a new website or maybe you just want to promote your freelancing or consultancy services and it even works for small agencies and stores if you have up to 5,000 monthly visitors, but keep in mind you are only allowed one free website. Now, after you create an account, the first thing you will be prompted to do is to connect your website. Now, a disclaimer here, if you are on WordPress, maybe you haven't yet purchased a WordPress plan, but make sure you opt for the business or e-commerce plans because these are the only ones that include plugins. Now, I did make the mistake to just choose a personal plan and I don't have access to the plugins, so there's really no way for me to go and install ConvertFlow because you need the plugin to do so. But once you have access to plugins, it's just super simple to take your script and add it onto your website. You can always find under settings, install code, this just take it from here, add it onto the plugin in WordPress or connect it to any other website you're using and you're good to go. Also, keep in mind you will have to add some extra snippets depending on the sections within the website where you want to add your calls to action. Usually what I recommend beyond pop-ups is to have a call to action either maybe on the sidebar of your blog, kind of like this example here on the side, or a must for any blog post is having a call to action either at the very end of the post or to break the post into manageable reading chunks. So adding it between your headings after maybe a tip. So remember to take these snippets as well from here. Before you get started with really creating any call to action, do look through the integrations as well. You will find some really handy ones in here, like Drip, which we recently reviewed, or Intercom, which is perfect if you want to send targeted pop-ups based on tags you've set in Intercom, so you can maybe target somebody from an agency or people based on their industry. So this is why ConvertFlow will help you a lot, because you can send targeted CTAs, pop-ups, whatever you want to call them, to every single person. Now from here you have some extra options such as setting domains. This will be handy for your landing pages. Creating segments, again this is a paid feature, but you can create those targeted groups of people to send different calls to action. And of course, tags, which really works similarly to segments and your website section. Now back to our calls to action. This is where you will usually work in. To get started, just click on new CTA or create call to action. And before we go on, I just want to take you through the options you have because this is good just for general marketing to know which types you can use and when they are best used. So you have the landing pages. These are basically independent pages. They don't overlay on top of anything and you can use them to generate leads for gated content and so on. Then you have 
overlay pop-ups, hook pop-ups. These are the ones that kind of pop on the side like this, but this is the one from Endercom. Then you have embedded CTAs, which you can add within a blog post or within a page. Sticky bars. Now I recommend using these over pop-ups, but do opt for one at the bottom of the page instead of the top ones. And then you have a bunch of templates to begin with based on your goals and maybe campaign types. So if you want to host a contest, there's even quizzes, discounts you can offer. You can also use these for lead generation, product recommendations. And I actually want to take you through all of these options so you can kind of see the diverse opportunities you have with ConvertFlow. So to begin with, I'm just opting for a landing page. Here you will have a bunch of templates to choose from, and I am going to pick something that's a bit more complex, like this quiz in here. Quickly preview it and see how it works, and use this template. Just give this a name and create a call to action. So the editor is very simple to use. To edit an element, just click on it and you will have your editing options on the right side with some extra options like most visual editing tools have to edit from here to duplicate, which basically copies the same element and to delete. Now, since this is a multiple steps landing page, you'll notice that each of these sections is essentially one step. And if you click here, you can edit your steps one by one or have an overlook of them. So what you can do is move them around a bit and choose to edit whichever one you want first. Now for the actual elements you have, if you click on this section column, which is essentially the background, some general settings to make it fit exactly the way you want to. So for example, if you want to have maybe a sign up box on the right and text with images on the left, you can opt for the 60-40% one. But if you want to leave it just this way for the quiz, leave the 100% option. Then you have some column paddings options. This is super handy because you don't need any development skills to edit these. Everything is done visually from here. You can also manually enter them. You have some options for the mobile version of this. So do always keep in mind that you want the mobile version, which you can test here, to be optimized. Then you have some overlays just in case you need these. You can also add an overlay image on top of all this. But keep in mind that all of these columns have separate editing options. So just play around with these until you get the design you want. If you use a template, it should be easy because they are already set to look great. The next element is the image. This is super simple. Just change the image. Again, work with the padding. Align it. You can choose to maybe hide an image on desktop. Ideally, you want to hide the image maybe on mobile so that the text can pop up and it will also speed up the website a bit. You can also just play with the size of this and obviously you have some extra editing options in here. Then you've got a simple headline with classic editing choices and your survey element and in here you can come in and edit change maybe the label to something like apples then for b just add something else you can also enable the multi-select option and of course you have some extra design choices from here again with no code necessary you can however use some html and css to take it one step further but really what matters for this survey is the confirmation actions. So once a person is done with this first step, you need to decide where they should go next. And in this case, it's just our next slide or step B, which is the next question. And they will basically be taken here. 
of course, you have some other options as well. And for every element, really, you have its own confirmation actions. And you can always add a new element from here. For example, we can delete all of this, add a new element, and we might want a headline, some text, and then I'm going to opt for a form to actually start capturing leads. And from here, you can choose which fields you require. Try to keep these as limited as possible or only with the information you truly need. There's also some extra handy paid features in here, like validating if an email is real, which helps you keep those bots away. And of course, the editing options. There's even a timer you can use and just play along with how long you want this to run for. If you want a daily timer or maybe one with a static date, which also shows you how many days are left. And really, there's just lots of other elements in here. Most commonly, you will need the headline, text, form, button, and image. If you want a longer landing page, you can always just add a new section. And on top of this, you can come in with some extra elements, like maybe a title. And then you can add some extra images and maybe some benefits to your offer, whatever you want to. And really, as you add it, I recommend you keep saving this. And before you publish anything on your website, make sure you preview this and you can just launch directly from here now to launch you will have to basically choose your website and set a unique url for that if you haven't connected your website this still works this way so you can kind of still use it on this convert flow domain but it's not as professional as having your own domain don't forget to add your meta title and meta description, which is what will show up in Google when someone searches maybe for a free ebook or a webinar. Then you also have some open graph tags and you can save this and you're good to go. Now going back to our calls to action, we are looking into some overlay pop-ups. Now for these, you have loads of options. And here's just some templates to show you kind of the variety you have, but we're just choosing something simple this time, like this one. Now the editing options per se work just like with the landing page. However, here you have some extra settings for your pop-up because this is not a landing page, so it essentially works in a completely different way. So you have your settings here at the top, and this gives you the opportunity to edit exactly how you want your pop-up to appear. You can choose the backdrop theme because this will be added on top of your website. So nothing from your website will show in the back. And you can also work with how big you want this to be. And as you can see, you have lots of fun options, either this or something like this. These are kind of the more common options compared to something super narrow like this. Now you also have the option to show a user profile. And really the most important thing is under pop-up trigger here is when you decide when you want to display this overlay. So classic options are to have it shown after a person scrolls to let's say the bottom of a blog post or a page, then you have maybe a time delay, so you can wait 10 seconds before the pop-up opens. Then you have the click option, an on-site message, and the only one I would recommend, honestly, is the exit intent, because this is the most effective one. So whenever someone wants to leave your website, this pop-up will appear, and you can choose to always trigger it, but I would also recommend hiding it for a couple of days. So if a person comes onto your website, then wants to leave, they will get this pop-up. But if they close it, you can choose to wait, let's say 15 days before you show the same pop-up again. So in case they come back again after five days, they won't see it again. But if they come back after, let's say a month, they will receive the same pop-up again. You can also choose for this to work on mobile or not. 
Again, don't forget to save. Now, the way in which this does work is that think of it as a two-step pop-up. So people will add in their email, ask to get the code, and they will receive it. Now, you can also just opt maybe to give the code without capturing emails. So replacing this form with maybe just a button. So I'm going to delete this. Replace the button with get code, then move to confirmation actions, jump to a call to action step, step to discount, done. Click on save, always click on save. And now when we preview this, we get the pop-up, click on get code, and the users will get the code without submitting their email. Now this is not a best practice because you do want to get their email to retarget them in the future but you can also give them this discount without asking for an email just because you don't want them to maybe leave your website now we have a bunch of other call to action options and we are moving to the hooks so for the hooks you have some i would still call them pop-ups but they appear in the lower right corner of the screen and you can even add your quizzes in here, a customer survey, if you want to get some feedback maybe, a testimonial segmentation survey, a newsletter sign up pop up in here, and you can even just send them some messages in here like sales messaging, a discount, it doesn't have to really look like a pop up ad or anything like that. Let's just choose this customer survey for now. This is not something you would display on all pages, but you can display on your product page. Now you can turn this into something like, how would you rate this article? If you maybe want to run a campaign to get some feedback on your content. Now you can run this for you know just a couple of months so that you can get some statistically significant data and then just stop it. Again, the settings are in here. And again, you have your pop-up triggers. So you can have this ideally after they scroll down or even after maybe, you know, a couple of extra seconds to give them the time to look through the article. And again, we're saving this, looking at the preview. And basically, when someone comes in, they can click on an option and they will be just given a simple confirmation message. And then we are going to my favorite part, which is embedded calls to action. And again, here you have a plethora of options. We are just going to choose something like this, a blogger newsletter form. So this is kind of something you would add maybe at the end of a blog post but again you can always add it within the content on the side at the very top as a pop-up it really depends on how much you want it to pop out I recommend keeping it within context so that it doesn't overlay again you have some settings here but it's not that complex since you just take this and add it exactly where you want it to appear I'm just going to edit this a bit because I need solely the email. You can even remove a column, replace this. When creating these embedded calls to action, if you can't find what you need exactly in here, you can always just start from scratch. Something fun you can try is maybe having a quiz and adding it within your article. So there's just lots of ways to use this creatively. Finally, we have the sticky bars. Now, these are the ones that will appear either at the top or at the bottom of the page. Again, I recommend the ones that are at the bottom of the page. So something like this. And I'm just going to use this template. And again, the editing options are similar. Remember on top of all of your actionable items, which honestly you will only need one of those, so one button to make sure you don't overcomplicate 
the whole situation because it can be difficult and it's scientifically proven that people have a harder time to make a decision when faced with multiple choices. So go onto your button and always add the confirmation action to make sure you are taking them to the right URL or to the right next step. And for these bars specifically, go to your settings and here you can really work with the positioning of your sticky bar and choose where you want to display them. And as usual, you have your triggers. But keep in mind that, for example, an exit intent works best with the overlay pop-ups. If you choose to add the exit intent here, you risk people not seeing it because, you know, they're heading towards the top of the screen while maybe this appears at the bottom. So you might want to maybe position it from the top and you can even opt to have it scroll down as people are moving maybe towards the end of the post. And again, your trigger suppression options, click on save. This is something you would be tempted to always forget because I do. So you can also preview this and see how this works. Keep in mind, people do have the option to close this, which is super handy to keep things clean and really to avoid annoying anyone. Now this is it for the calls to action. Again, you can browse back campaign type. What I recommend is to also look through the search bar here. So maybe you want to promote a webinar. You will get a bunch of options in here. Again, you can just go to that campaign, preview it. Again, here you have some extra elements you could be using, like just adding some extra information around the webinar, whatever you wish to do. Something I forgot to mention is that you can preview this on the mobile version as well. And in this case, for instance, you might want to just keep this registration form and some information and hide the testimonials or the speakers and some extra information from the top that maybe is not necessary to make sure that it's super easy for people to register regardless of their device. Now here at the top, you will also notice the broadcast feature, which is a paid feature, and it essentially lets you schedule and launch high priority calls to action. So you can create a campaign, add multiple calls to action and target them all together. Then you have your insights section, and here you can look at lead generation. And this kind of tells you which call to action has worked best, your conversion rate, and this data will appear once you start getting it on your website. And you can even see how many people have looked at this. So if one of them isn't performing that well, you can give up on it, take it off your website, or replace it with something else. And you also have your lead activity information in here, which actually gives you an overlook at every contact and kind of what pages they've seen, what CTAs they clicked on. So it's really super detailed. And of course, you also have your contacts in here. So it will work kind of like a CRM, which you can always just export and move it over into your main CRM tool. Finally, do remember you can work with some external collaborators or with your teammates. And you can also create and save templates in here so you can just reuse them. This is super handy if you have maybe an agency and you want to kind of reuse the same format for your pop-ups. So everyone, this is it. I honestly recommend you go and give this tool a try straight away because it's really super simple to use. At least I think it's the easiest solution out there at the moment and it's free if you have a smaller website so why not give it a try. Try to stay away from overlay pop-ups unless you opt for the exit intent one and instead replace this with maybe a sticky bar or a hook pop-up or even all of these together. Try to have maybe just one or two on a single page. So if, for example, if you are on your blog post, add a embedded call to action, or you can add two of them and have just a hook pop up on the side. So you won't add an extra sticky bar at the top. 
If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment, and I will see you next time. Have a great day.